Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Cat's Corner. Please be a pal and reach down and hit that subscribe button. Our guest this week is a seven-time All-Star 2022 National League MVP. In all honesty, too good to be on this program with us. It's Paul Goldsmith. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? We do appreciate you making time for us. Um, happy holidays to uh, to you and yours. I, I didn't plan on asking this, but I'm awful, as you know. What was the best Christmas present you got? This year? Yeah. You know, my wife and I, we went on vacation right before Christmas. We got five days or four four days together, just me and her, and we hadn't done that in a while. So that was uh, something I've been looking forward to uh, this whole off season, and we were able to get away, and um, it was just a great trip. So a gift of a nice experience with you and the missus. That's yeah. uh, very nice. Yeah. I got a gift I'm card. Together. No, yeah, I got a gift card, not that you asked. Um, so one of the things I think – we saw on social media and Cardinal fans are starved for baseball. That's why the hot stove is so great in St. Louis and every rumor gets amplified on social media, mostly in a good way. But one of the videos was out there um, was you with the driveline guys. Mm -hmm. And it was a short video and people said he's changing his batting stance. So I want to ask you about working with driveline. Is that the first time? How, how long have you worked with those guys? Oh yeah, you know I went out there in um, in November, spent a couple of days with them, and uh, you know it was great, great experience. I learned a lot, and uh, I was really impressed with what they had going on there. And I'd been trying to get out there the last couple of years, but it hadn't really worked out. And made a point to do it this off season, and uh, just a great group of people to learn from, and uh, hopefully picked up some things that can help me and and I can implement into my game and, and help us win this year, and uh, hopefully do some good things. Now, it looked like you were doing a drill, but I don't know if you could give us any clue. Have you renovated your swing, or is it going <laughs> to be the standard Goldie swing we're used to seeing? Well, you know, I'd like to play a little bit better than last year, you know, so I think hopefully we'll be back to how I played the few years before that, so always working on that. Um, but I wouldn't say any big overhauls or anything like that. You know, like I said, going out there and, uh, you know, other places that I've gone in my career is continuing to learn and, and getting different perspectives and and find um, ways to keep getting better. Because if I don't keep getting better, then I'm going to get passed up. And selfishly, I won't have a job. And uh, you know, unselfishly, then I won't I won't be as good for our team. And so, I think that's been my goal. You know, every day, but really in the off season, you have more time. Is and there's a lot of different ways to get better. Go to places like Drive Ryan or other places I've been, or you know, conversations with current or you know past players or coaches and so you know the off season gives you a time to reflect on the previous years and and look for ways to get better and it's you know it's does not just hitting you know you know you make adjustments with the way you train in the weight room or do you know play defense or other other parts of the game as well and so for me you know it's not any different than I've I've always been in my career I'm just kind of fascinated by it so it looked like they were working on ways to improve bat speed like what are the little idiosyncrasies that go along with that? Like, obviously, it's small things that are probably very technically oriented that are above what I know about. But can you explain kind of what it is? Oh, uh, well, I mean, you know, you can make hitting as uh, complicated or uh, simple as you want. And I, I like the simple form. And I think uh, I've always tried to think that way. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty obvious that, you know, bat speed the more bat speed the harder you're gonna hit the ball and the harder you're gonna hit the ball um you know the better your performance is gonna be with all things equal so i mean if, if the only way you're hitting the ball hard is you know you're hitting ground balls or pulling the ball or now all of a sudden you're swinging misses going up and you're not swinging at strikes and so now you're not walking you know obviously that's gonna be bad but if if you can you know have you know better bat speed with you know as good a swing as is possible for each person then you know the statistics are are very very obvious that you know your performance is going to go up. So this is something I've done the last couple of years. You know, drive lines. You know, kind of. Um, you know, they've they've been some of the more vocal people about it, and so for me, it was one to learn and see if what I had done the last couple of years was similar to what they were teaching. Um, and you know, there's some similarities or some ways that they've you know, things they taught me that could be a little bit different that I've, I've tested out and implemented, but I mean, it's just 
to me, the easiest way is to think of it like weightlifting. You can't go in there and swing as hard as you can or lift as much weight as you can every single day. You're either going to get hurt or your form's going to break down. But there's definitely a time for you to go in there and swing fast or move fast in the weight room or sprint fast or go full speed on defense. There's also times to slow down and work on form, to work on, you know, for a swing that would kind of be your mechanics. Um, and then there's a balance of everything in between. So um, the speed thing, I think, gets a lot of attention and it, it looks cool and you can measure it um, and all those things. But I think it's just one part of, you know, a swing um, and something, you know, I've been working on the last few years. And this is just another step. And, you know, if it didn't get them put on social media, nobody would know and, and it wouldn't be a big deal for me. It was just something I've, you know, been working on, something that's always been part of your swing, my swing and, and things I'm doing. And I guess uh, they happen to put it on social media and, and now I get asked about it. So, yeah, I apologize, but, you know, I'm on the social media. I'm like the kids. I see it. I got to ask about it. So anyone who knows you, your approach to hitting is simple. It's the same thing you say after every game where you go three for four with, you know, two homers. You tell the media the same thing and they're like, no, but really, your approach is find a good pitch to hit and barrel it. You did a lot of that last year, but not as much as you had the year before. When you look at the video of yourself hitting last year, what do you see? Um, yeah, I think the swing was just, you know, a little bit inconsistent throughout the year and was just never able to really get in that groove where I was able to consistently barrel the ball as much as I believe I'm capable of doing. And um, so when that happens, you know, you're you're subconsciously making adjustments. You know, sometimes you're starting your swing earlier, sometimes a little later, you know, different things like that. So, you know, I was just trying to, to find a way to perform and help us win and, and wasn't able to do that, you know, as much as um, I'd been done in years previous and as much as I would have liked. And unfortunately, you know, it cost us some games and um, the way the season went was not what we wanted. So, um, you know, the goal, like every year, is just to get in a good position to hit um, and then let your athleticism and, and let everything else, your reactions just take over. And so that's just been the focus. It's always been the focus of the off season, but you know, when you have a year that, you know, you don't feel as your best or things didn't come as easily, you know, you just go back and it's not making changes. It's just making sure I'm getting back to the things that make me successful. Um, I said, getting in a good position to hit and just, you know, putting a good swing on the ball. So, you know, we could get a lot more complicated, like I said earlier, but I think the simplest thing is like that. And um, so back to your original question about changing, I think there's not a change is trying to be different. There's a change of trying to get back to the, you know, my best years and years where my swing was its best. And it's not just a swing. There's a lot of other things that go along with it. And so that's really always the focus, but um, probably even just a little bit more this year, just a little bit more focus on that and, and just making sure, you know, because it didn't come as easily because, you know, I was kind of, bouncing back and forth between, you know, feeling good and not feeling quite as great as just, you know, having a little bit more focus on making sure I'm not overlooking anything and just getting, you know, back to the basics and getting into a good position to hit. I know uh, you take care of yourself physically, but the questions are going to come this stage of your career physically. Are you still the same guy? Do you still feel the same way in the batter's box? Yeah, of course. I mean, sometimes you feel better and sometimes you feel worse. So, uh, I mean, I think you got to be honest. I mean, I'm 36 years old now. And so if I tried to do what I did, not just in the batter's box, but how I trained during the year, what I do in the off season, if I tried to do what I did 10 years ago or more, I mean, I don't think I would, um, be as successful as I've been. And, and, um, so you're always adapting, you're always learning, always looking for ways to get better. And, um, you know, this off season is no different than any others. Now, last season, rough all the way around for you guys, for the fans, I was still great. Um, what, how difficult was that, you know, for you guys as a team who had talent? I know you guys were very confident going into the season. And then things happened with the starting rotation. Then it kind of snowballed. What do you make of that? And how difficult was it to go through that when you guys knew you were capable of doing so much more? Yeah, I mean, I think it's all it's all relative. I mean, we're talking about a sport here. We're talking about baseball and, you know, there's a lot of things all the time that are going on on the world stage that are a lot more important than sports. So in that respect, you know, we got to keep some perspective. But as far as within sports, it's definitely one of the most, if not the most disappointing season of my career, um, you know, to have 
a team that very, very much underperformed and have, you know, lose as many games the way we did. Um, and knowing how passionate the fan base is and how great this organization is and just the tradition and everything that's gone along with it. I mean, you want to be the the team and the player players that are carrying that forward and, and doing great things. And, you know, we had the goal to, to win the world series and unfortunately it came up extremely short. So, um, you know, on uh, looking back, you know, especially early on, you're just trying to figure out what's going on. What can I do as an individual or what can I do to help other people um, play better and kind of get this thing turned around and, and what adjustments need to be made. And so, yeah, that takes a lot more effort mentally and physically as you're trying to see what you can do versus when you're coming out and everything's just kind of clicking on all cylinders and the team's playing well. So there was definitely that. Um, but, you know, at the end, it got to a point where we had dug ourselves into a hole, you know, that we couldn't get out of. And, you know, then there was a, a bunch of different roster moves that were made. And, you know, we were definitely – trying to finish strong and, and trying to prepare, you know, even for this year, I think the last month, you know, you kind of looked at, you know, some guys were getting opportunities, you know, kind of a little tryout for this upcoming season. And, and me as a, as a more veteran player was trying to be there for as many young guys we had, we had a, a huge amount of roster turnover in the middle of the year and try to make sure that um, I could help those guys be good, you know, last year, but also be better prepared for spring training and going forward this year. So as tough as it was, I think, hopefully long-term it'll be a great thing for the organization and for all of us as individuals, because, um, you know, failure makes you make changes and, and it exposed a lot of things that we weren't doing correctly. And, and hopefully we learn from those. And, and now this year, you know, we can correct those mistakes that we weren't able to correct last year and, and hopefully have a great year this year. Now your boy, Arenado look frustrated. Um, and if my guess is right, he's in the batting cage, 12 hours a day right now trying to get even better so that he comes back with a vengeance and the team comes back with a vengeance. Have you talked to him this off season? Do you stay in touch and do you know what, uh, what kind of things he's doing? Of course I talk to him all the time. And uh, I mean, even after the year he had previous where, you know, we both finished top three in the MVP, he was working in the batting cage. That's not going to change. I mean, that's what makes him so great. So um, until his career is over and probably long after it, he'll be in the batting cage working and trying to get better. And this year is no different. And I expect him to come back and have a great year and um, excited for all of us to get, get back to work in, uh, in a couple months. He does not like to lose. I know you don't either. I think he shows it more though. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. So, uh, you know, I've, I can uh, hide my emotions, you know, better than most good and bad. And, uh, that's all right. You know, people need to be themselves. I don't want to, people to try to be like me and I'm not trying to be like them. You know, as long as we're all working in the same direction that um, we're great teammates and, and we're doing what's best for this team and organization. And I don't think anyone has a problem with anyone else. And, um, and for the most part, we, we've had that and we'll have that this year as well. So that brings me to something that we've talked about before. Um, the, the fans view of Paul Goldschmidt, gamer guy, um, stoic. I always, every time I hear that, he's not stoic. Okay. You just, you're asking him, Hey, you had, you had three hits and he, he hates talking about himself, not stoic, but also doesn't say much lead by example guy. I've seen you since the day you got here in the cage, talking to the younger guys. I saw a ton of it last year. See you having lunch with some of the younger guys. I see it. I don't interrupt you guys. Cause I know you don't want to hear from me when you're trying to enjoy uh, a sandwich or, or something, but you mentioned last year with the turnover and roster and a lot of young guys getting a shot. Is that more of a role for you is even doing more of what you have been doing in terms of trying to be a guiding force in the clubhouse? Um, I think it needs to be. Um, it's kind of weird just from a personal perspective. You kind of don't view yourself as a veteran player. I mean, for me, I still feel like a young player and I'm trying to learn. And every day I'm trying to prove myself that I'm still good enough to be on this team and to be in major league baseball. And I want to go out there and perform, but you also have to step back and realize that, Hey, you know, I have played 13, 14 seasons in major league baseball, you know, I'm getting up there in age for a baseball player. And we have players that don't have the same experience or maybe they're, you know, getting their first taste of major league action. And, and I can share that, you know, my experiences and stuff that was taught with me with them. So, yeah, I mean, that's something that I think I need to do. Um, a better job of and have, have tried to do that, tried to do it last year and in previous years as well. But, you know, we 
we did have, you know, the roster turnover with a lot more younger guys. And, you know, we've added three pitching veterans this year and it wouldn't surprise me if we had more guys. And so I think, you know, though it's not just me, it's our whole team. We're all working together and everyone's doing the best, best they can. And, um, but, you know, I, I remember when I was a young player and, you know, if guys, what really helped me perform was a lot of the great veterans that were on the team, the guys that I would take ground balls with, they would taught me things and I didn't have to learn as much through experiences. I got stuff taught to me um, beforehand. Yeah. I mean, I had to be open-minded and ready to listen. And I was thankfully, but thankfully we also had guys that were there to teach me coaches, veteran players. And, and now that's a role that I need to fill. Would you say that it's a fair statement to say there are times you had to push yourself into that leadership role when you didn't feel like, you were the guy to be the leader. Is that a fair assessment of trying to kind of figure that out? No, I wouldn't say that. I think it's just weird. It's it's just, I don't know. You don't, don't see yourself. You know, you look at other players like, man, that guy's been around forever. You know, he's just this and that. And then for me, I'm just like, like I said, every day I just am trying to do my job. And I think that's, you know, even back to the stoic or, you know, how I don't show much emotion. I mean, I think off the field. You smile, I'm different- but you smile a lot on the field. I mean, yeah, I mean, you I have fun, because you can I tell think, you love playing. Of course, I do, but I, I think, for me, is I want to do everything possible to perform for myself and and for the team and the organization, the fans, and so for me, if I have to be a little bit more serious um, in order to perform better, then that's that's the decision that I've made. I'd rather look back and say, you know, man, maybe I didn't enjoy it that much, but I don't want to look back and say, man, I wish I would have worked a little bit harder. I wish I would have focused a little bit more. I wish I would have done this and that, and so. I think it's a conscious decision I've made in, in my career and in my life. And, you know, if we're out there playing golf or something else, um, I'm a definitely a different guy. So you mentioned the uh, new starting pitcher. So Mo said, we're going to get three starters. And then boom, boom, boom. You had three starters. You got Sonny, Kyle, Lance Lynn. Just your thoughts on what those guys bring. And, right, you played with Lance uh, at, at the uh, World Baseball mm-hmm. Classic. Do you know those guys and what do you think of them? So, yeah, I got to play with Lance. I mean, we had a great time with Team USA. Unfortunately, came up, you know, one win short. That one's going to hurt probably for the rest of my life. Um, but he was great. He pitched great from us. And I know all the Cardinals fans know him and, and love him. And he had a lot of great success here. Uh, Gibson, I've just met a few times, knowing around. And, and Sonny Gray, you know, same thing. I guess the biggest thing for him is I'm glad I don't have to face him because I had terrible numbers off him. So uh, it was good when he was in the AL. But I think even this year he came in and, and I was 0 for 3. So, you know, he's been a great pitcher for a long time. All those guys have. And um, I know they're excited to be here and wanted to be with this organization and, um, and are ready to help us uh, play well and, and get a lot of wins and, and hopefully do something great this year. Now, I have a really good relationship with, with Lance. You know, he's been here before, back and forth. He loves that stuff. I think you're the anti-Lance Lynn in that, like, you're nice to every reporter. Even if the question is awful, you're nice. Lance Lynn gets a bad question. He will destroy you. He, but in a way, too, like Sonny's that way. Sonny said, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to get guys out. They do bring a certain edge. I don't know uh, about Gibson as much, but those guys bring an edge, don't they? Yeah, of course. I mean, I got a lot of respect for those guys. And Gibby, too, when you face them, I mean, you want guys to compete. But you know, everyone's personalities are going to be different, and you want guys to be who they're going to be. If you start to try to start changing people, you know, you're not going to get the best out of them. And, and you can feel it if guys aren't their authentic selves. So um, those guys are great. Uh, they're going to be great in the clubhouse. Every, all their you know teammates over, over the course of their careers have loved them, and uh, we're excited to have them. I want to ask you about the young guys, right, Wynn and Walker. Um, I was totally impressed with what Walker did. And what I saw from Wynn, even though he didn't hit, um, if you follow his path to get to the big leagues, he always started slow when he went to a new level of the minor leagues and then caught fire. I think he's a special guy too. What do you think of those two guys? Yeah, I mean, we got to see Walker throughout the year. I mean, he hit the ball. He hit the ball great. I mean, he was great for us. I mean, we you got to keep reminding yourselves how young, you know, both of those guys are at 21 years old. I think I was still in college. So, and you put them on, you know, an MLB team with the Cardinals on the biggest stage, you know, it was really impressive um, to be able to come in, you know, as a rookie and at that age and do what they've done. And, and hopefully, you know, they learned a lot last year. Walker got a lot more experience um, and, you know, working with Turner, the hitting coach and, and all the other coaches, I'm sure he'll be even better this coming year and, and win as well. I mean, he was, 
you know, only up for the maybe those last five or six weeks, but I was really impressed as well. I mean, his defense was amazing. He won some games for us just with his defense. And um, I know he didn't hit well, but I mean, everyone struggles from time to time. And I know he's taken that into the offseason. He's not going to lose confidence. He's going to come back ready and stronger than ever. And um, I mean, they're great guys. I've been able to stay in touch with them a little bit this offseason as well. And we're excited to have them. And, and honestly, we need those guys and we need everyone on our team to to be ready to go and to play well. So um, I know they're ready to go. I know they want to win and, and are doing everything possible to prepare and, and be ready for this upcoming year. If I'm playing first base and wins it short and it's going to be a close play, I'm going to be afraid of the throw that he unleashes. Have you ever seen a, a young guy with an arm like that? Um, so that's funny. I mean, when I had heard that he had throw the ball, you know, 100 miles an hour, or whatever, you know, you're like, man, OK, I better be ready over here. Um, and a lot of guys that are young and, and have really good physical tools are usually out of control and they're throwing the ball all over the place and it's moving or whatever the Russian. But if you watch him, I mean, he was the most under control I've ever seen for a 21 year old, you know, especially a guy with a rocket like that. I mean, he's actually has a really easy ball to catch. Um, so that was that was something I was thankful for. I wasn't sure, you know, even going into spring training, I was like, all right, we'll see how this is because I would kind of heard about him. But I mean, playing first base and watching him play is is easy. It doesn't. He doesn't throw the ball all over the place. He's very, very accurate. He's under control. You can see that he takes his time. He doesn't let it loose unless he has to. And um, he's a great athlete. And so I think that baseball mind, you know, to me, long term, that's just going to be really valuable. And there's still going to be a learning curve as there is for all of us. But um, was really, really impressed by him. What's it like playing for Ollie? Like you play for other managers. What's it like playing for Ollie? Tell me something about Ollie, maybe something that's embarrassing that I could throw in his face next season. But what's it like playing for him? Uh, I can't do that. But, I mean, he's great. I mean, um, you know, him and I, our relationship is great. We go back a long time. So he's a really smart baseball mind. And he's very, very detail-oriented. And he sees the game that way. And so you know, he see, he'll see things even when we win that just, you know, might not even show up in the box score. And he, he wants us to get better at those things. And, and I love that for a manager. He's very, very competitive um, last year you know, especially he, he, that was hard on him. I mean, he wants to win. And when the win and loss goes in, the managers call him as a hitter, you know, you can go four for four and the team loses. I mean, you're disappointed, but if you look at your stats, you know, they're a little bit better, but a manager's stats are the win and loss. And so when things don't work out, even if, you know, he's making the right decision, he's bringing in the right pitcher, he's pinching and he's putting the right line together. When we lose, you know, that's on his shoulders. And so I definitely felt for him last year because a lot of that's honestly on us as players. We didn't do our job to, to the ability we need to do it. And, and he took a lot of blame and criticism for that. Um, that's the manager's job, but um, you know, I know he'll be ready to go this year and he's great. And like I said, very, very knowledgeable and, and forward thinking. And, and like I said, detail oriented. And a young guy, like I just watch him. I know it just seems he relates really well with the players. Do you see that also? Yeah, of course. I mean, he played, he played in the minor leagues. He's been with the organization. He coached a lot of those players in the minors. He got, to the big leagues coaching very, very quickly. And he's done a number of different roles. So um, he's always trying to be as prepared as possible. And, um, you know, he he's does a great job and, and hopefully he'll, he'll do it again this year and hopefully we can back him up and, and play well. So you got new pieces, possibly some more pieces to be added. What's the confidence level? Knowing the starting pitchers that you brought in to help things out, knowing how much you want to rebound, knowing how much the young guys are wanting to take a step forward, what's your confidence level that this team can once again be a playoff team? Yeah, I mean, I think our goals are bigger than that. We want to do much more than just make the playoffs. And, of course, we want to win the World Series. I mean, those are the expectations for the St. Louis Cardinals organization. Um, the confidence is high that we can go out and, and have the potential to do that. But, um, like I say every year, we got to prove it. Every team right now, um, has zero wins, zero losses. We got to go to spring training and from opening day, um, we got an opportunity to prove it and get in the playoffs and then do something special. So, uh, our goals are definitely bigger than just getting in the playoffs. And, and that's where we're thinking, but you know, we got to go out there and prove it. You got to earn every win. There are other teams in our division, um, and across the league, both leagues really are, are really, really good. And, um, we'll have, you know, our work cut out for us, but that's what we want to do. We want to accomplish something special and, and hopefully we can do that. Last thing before I let you go, it's out there that uh, there's been talk of an extension for you. I'm not trying to get in your business. I wouldn't do that. Sounds, sounds but, like you are. But my question is more open-ended where <laughs> it doesn't put you on the spot. 
Is that something that you would like? Is, have you thought about ending your career as a St. Louis Cardinal? There, I asked it in a way where it doesn't box you in. Uh, it does feel like it boxes me in, but I mean, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, for me, I've just always tried to play the game and, and let any contractual stuff leave that to, you know, leave that out. And uh, so I think for me, it's just preparing for this year, preparing to try to go play well and, and help us win. And uh, whatever else happens, you know, it's going to happen. Our guest has been Paul Goldsmith. Paul, I appreciate you making time. I apologize if I boxed you in, but I got to admit, if I didn't ask that, I'd be killed for it. So I put myself before no, you. I, I understand. Hey, it's, it's part of the business. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm prepared. It's all good. That's going to do it for this edition of Cat's Corner. On the way out, hit that subscribe button.